Afternoon again, folks. Uh, Fitness Australia here giving you a national COVID-19 restriction update. And as we would uh, have anticipated, if you've been reading the news, etc., there are, again, moving uh, amendments and changes uh, every half an hour or so. With me today, I have David Batty, uh, David Lewis from WA, Steve Grace from South Australia and Northern Territory, and I'd like to introduce to you Anthony Miles, who's joined us this week as our new Queensland um, Regional Manager. I'm not going to put Anthony on the spot and ask him for an update because he's only just finding his feet under the table, but David, perhaps, uh, David Batty, perhaps you can start in Queensland or move down the eastern seaboard. Okay, so starting up in Queensland, the uh, mask wearing requirement has been extended now up in Queensland due to three cases popping up overnight. So that southeastern corridor now is still required to have masks on indoor venues. So they still have the same exemptions as before, but that has just been extended by a further week by the look of it as it stands. Um, going down to New South Wales, New South Wales, the, there has been no change other than the extension of the stay at home order for two weeks. So all of the requirements there have stayed the same. Um, moving down to Victoria, Victoria now has a indoor mask policy back in force. That was as of 12 a.m. this morning. So everybody is required to wear a mask whilst indoors with the same exemptions as previous, which include um, high exertion whilst exercise. So no, no uh, capacity caps in Victoria, David? Not, not as yet. I've had a couple of phone calls this morning with different areas. As it stands, they are, they're hoping that they've got a lid on what they've got, but there's been a couple of points that have been a little bit more concerning to them. And the ACT? ACT has no change as it stands. Okay. And Tassie, no change? No change at all. Right. Thanks, David Batty. Uh, moving across to SANT, Steve. Yeah, no real changes here, Barry. Um, there's been some uh, extra restrictions put on people travelling from Melbourne um, and from Victoria. Um, but apart from that, no, no changes that are affecting us at this stage. And Northern Territory the same? Yeah, correct. Okay, and uh, David Lewis over in Perth. Yeah, thanks, Barry. Um, no change over here um, since Monday morning. Uh, there's been no restrictions in place. Uh, there's no capacity limits. Um, most people came with the Safe WA app and uh, basic um, protocols in place for standards of hygiene in facilities. But apart from that, we're all the same as uh, earlier this week, Barry. Thanks, David. Okay, so um, <clears throat> David, first question to you here about masks in regional New, New South Wales. So there, there has been discussions with the government around masks and the requirements for classes and for any indoor venues uh, in regional and they are steadfast. At the moment, there's been a couple of exposure sites that have spread outside of the um, Sydney metropolitan area. So they are really, really concerned that if they open up any further restrictions that that, that could cause seating events in those regional areas, which would be just devastating. So as it stands, I, I'm, I'm afraid that we won't be able to go with that. And uh, so in regional New South Wales, you have to wear a mask. You can't even remove it if it's high intensity. Is that what we're saying? Uh, for classes, you cannot. For high intensity, you can, but you can. the high intensity does not is not included in classes. Classes must maintain those masks. Okay. Uh, one from Andrew, I'm not sure which state, or oh, regional New South Wales. What mask requirements for outdoor kids' fitness classes and kids' running groups? Uh, whilst outdoors, there is no requirement with masks for... Uh, New South Wales, we'd recommend that if you're the coach or instructor of any description that you would want to wear a mask, as this is probably the, the most, uh, the, the biggest concern with health is that the person running the events or in multiple events back to back would have uh, the infection and then pass it on to <laughs> multiple people. So if you're running the event, please, and you can't keep that 1.5 metre distance, please ensure that you're wearing a mask. But outdoors, there isn't a requirement for masks as it stands. Okay, when we uh, spoke last week, there was a question that came up about um, the situation with personal trainers earning less than 75,000 
in New South Wales not being eligible for support. My understanding from the packages that they announced uh, jointly between the feds and the state uh, a couple of days ago is that that will apply for those people earning under $75,000. So if um, you are on the call today and you ask that question, uh, our advice or our information is that you will now be eligible for that. So uh, that's, that's one small positive to come out of this current situation. Um, David, is there any, have you got any general feeling about what might happen in Victoria? I mean, obviously they're monitoring things down there pretty, pretty closely. Reading the media, it seems they're going to be reluctant to go back to anything like they've had in the past, but of course that can change. That, that can change on, on a dime, really. Uh, they're looking, they're, they're, overnight, if we get a massive upspike in the numbers, especially in those exposure sites like the MCG and any of the other major exposure sites, they will um, definitely put some kind of cap on there. And that's why there is a, there's a requirement at the moment for us to just sit back and make sure that we've got those masks on in those indoor venues and hope that we actually won't go forward. But they're looking at possibly a greater amount of restrictions, but not necessarily a lockdown at this stage. Okay. And for those who don't know, there were 65 new cases in New South Wales recorded uh, yesterday, announced this morning. So... But as the Premier keeps saying, the numbers are all over the place, so we can't even assume that that is any sort of trend. Well, hope, hopefully it is, but we can't assume that. Uh, Steve or David Lewis, have you any other observations or comments? Or uh, No, not particularly, Barry. I think um, you know we are seeing that um, both in the NT and, and here in SA that people are watching um, closely and making sure that um, there's been some exposure sites and things in regional South Australia. So everyone is very um, aware of, of what's going on and um, doing everything they can to, to stop a, a leak. So, but at this stage, um, yeah, nothing's, nothing's come through, which is positive. Dave Lewis, any other? Uh, no real insights, Barry. Um, obviously just, um, I suppose there's movements in some of the border controls in place across WA. Uh, Victoria has been moved up to a sort of a low risk category at this stage. Um, but apart from that, uh, nothing, nothing more to add. Okay, a couple of other questions come up here. Queensland, uh, if a member refuses to use the check-in and doesn't authorise for us to enter their details, where do we stand? This is one of the hardest questions going at the moment. So the advice that we have is that you must collect as much data as possible. Those people that are, are entering their facility are going to be checking in with you anyway. Uh, they don't want to see any uh, staff members being verbally harassed or intimidated or driven in any way from that side of things because we are not the police. We are not the ones that have to actually, at the end of the day, make sure that those people do that. You have a couple of options. If they decide not to, you can ask them not to enter your facility and that that's perfectly acceptable as a, as a point of ent entry that you have them using your QR codes, you can have them scanning in so that you'll have the data that you can pass on to health after that, or you can call the police to ensure that that person is aware of their responsibilities. Yeah, it is a difficult one when you've got a problem client, but certainly it's completely within your rights to ask them not to uh, come in if they're not prepared to um, comply with uh, the requirements that you're asking, which are government mandated. Having said that, as David said, we don't want a situation where there's conflict or uh, aggression or bullying, harassment, and things like that. Um, New South Wales, one clarification on outside, can a train and two people from the same household? No, they cannot. So the two people from the same household can be together, but it can only be one-on-one -on -one training. Masks exempt when doing one-on-one -on -one in intense boxing training in Sydney, question? I would not advise that. Um, boxing is probably one of those areas where you're face-to-face -face with a person. It's probably going to be the highest risk environment out of all of it. Um, and the exertion levels are quite high. So boxing face-to-face, -face, doing pad work in an outdoor area, I would not recommend doing it at this stage if you can avoid it. And if you are going to do it, I'd say masks are probably going to be a definite requirement as you're within that 1.5 metre distance. Okay, so Theo's uh, raised a point here saying that um, uh, you have to be, if you're earning less than 30,000 as a PT, it doesn't apply. That, 
that um, surprises me. I think we might take up uh, some, see if we can get more information on that and perhaps uh, suggest that that's not fair. Well, it clearly isn't fair. So um, thanks, CEO, for raising that. We will take that up with the various authorities and see if we can get some, some clarification or improvement on that. Uh, that's all the questions that have come through, guys. So thanks again for your time. Um, we may or may not convene later this week, depending on how things transpire over the next 24 hours. If not, it'll be early next week. Uh, just an answer to the last question that somebody has put up. Can a mobile trainer go into somebody's backyard? No, that's counted as their residence and you're not allowed to have visitors at the moment. So it must be in a public space. Yep. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for the people who are tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.